Our chief medical correspondent, Dr. John LaPook, joins us now. John, good morning. Uh, you, you heard the vice president say he was uh, recently tested. He tested negative, so he doesn't need to wear a mask. Should he wear a mask? You know, the problem, Anthony, is that uh, the president said that he's tested regularly and that he does not have coronavirus. The problem is you can test negative for coronavirus but still be infected. And here's how. First of all, we know that the test is not perfect. So you can have what's called a false negative where you do the swab in the nose or the throat and it says that you don't have it, but actually you do have it. The second way is trickier, and that's the issue of incubation. So somebody can be infected, but remember that incubation period is two to 14 days, and during that period, a test would be negative because it hasn't blossomed yet in the back of the throat and the nose, so the test is gonna be negative. At any time then, after the test was negative, it could then come out, it could blossom, and of course the problem is you can be spreading the virus asymptomatically, you don't have to have any symptoms at all. Now we don't know exactly what the timing is when his last test was, uh, we asked, but we were not told. Um, I have to say that I have patients who have had similar questions, they said to me, I tested negative, do I still need to wear a mask, and I've said yes. And finally, with that, there's the issue of uh, modeling, so you have the Mayo Clinic rules which say uh, patients and visitors should be wearing these masks. Everybody's wearing the mask except for the vice president, so what message does that send? Right. John, some states have started to reopen. Some will open th this week. What message <clears throat> would you have to people in those states? I would say don't prematurely celebrate. I think you have to go slowly. It reminds me of traveling in a car down a long and winding road, right? And suddenly you decide you're going to step on the accelerator and go fast. If you're going to do that, you better have your eyes open. And believe me, we are on a long and winding road. And having our eyes open here means having a lot of testing, enough testing so that we know what's going on in a certain area. Uh, and, and we're talking about both types of tests, Anthony. We're talking about the test to see do you have the infection and also the test to see whether you had it. So you have to go slowly. You have to go carefully. Yeah, I, I was in Central Park here in New York yesterday. A lot more people out, weather warming up. A lot of cabin fever, people sensing things have turned. The, the, the urge is to go out now, John. I completely understand and empathize with that. I mean, you know, it's been months now, and people are starting to get uchy. You know, they want to go out. They want to hug people. They want to get back to normal. And I think it's a natural instinct. I know, I know it's hard to continue to do the same thing, you know, the physical distancing and all the things that we've been doing. But I think it's so important. The last thing we want to do is to let our foot off of the gas pedal in terms of doing all of these efforts and then have this pandemic just come roaring right back. So we've got to go slow. But of course, we all empathize with our desire. We all have spring fever. We want to get out and around. All right, Dr. John LaPook, thank you, John.